హలో ఆస్పిరెంట్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు ద డైలీ న్యూస్ పేపర్ అనాలిసిస్ బ్రోటి బై షంగర్ ఐఎస్ అకాడమీ టుడే ఎయిటీన్త్ సెప్టెంబర్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ డిస్ప్లేడ్ హియర్ ఆర్ ది ఆర్టికల్స్ దట్ వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ ద ఫస్ట్ ఆర్టికల్ గవర్నమెంట్ ప్లాన్ స్కీమ్ టు ఎన్షూర్ వాటర్ సెక్యూరిటీ ఫర్ ఫార్మర్స్ దిస్ ఆర్టికల్ ఇస్ టేకన్ ఫ్రమ్ ద న్యూస్ పేపర్ లైవ్ మిన్ అండ్ ద సెకండ్ ఆర్టికల్ ప్రైమ్ మినిస్టర్ టు అటెండ్ కార్ సమ్మిట్ అడ్రస్ ఇండియన్ డైస్పోరా దిస్ ఆర్టికల్ ఇస్ టేకన్ ఫ్రమ్ ద న్యూస్ పేపర్ ది ఇండియన్ ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ ద థర్డ్ ఆర్టికల్ సిఓపి ట్వంటీ నైన్ ఇన్ అసోబైజాన్ ఫోకస్ టు బియోన్ క్లైమేట్ ఫైనాన్స్ అగ్రిమెంట్ దిస్ ఆర్టికల్ ఇస్ టేకన్ ఫ్రమ్ ద న్యూస్ పేపర్ ఇండియన్ ఎక్స్ప్రెస్ సో వితౌట్ మచ్ డిలే లెట్స్ గెట్ ఇన్ టు అర్ డిస్కషన్ లుక్ అట్ దిస్ న్యూస్ పేపర్ ఆర్టికల్ టేకన్ ఫ్రమ్ ద న్యూస్ పేపర్ లైవ్ మిన్ గవర్నమెంట్ ప్లాన్ స్కీమ్ టు ఎన్షూర్ వాటర్ సెక్యూరిటీ ఫర్ ఫార్మర్స్ దిస్ ఆర్టికల్ ఇస్ టాకింగ్ అబౌట్ ఎ గవర్నమెంట్ ప్లాన్ ఆఫ్ ఫోర్ థౌసండ్ ఫైవ్ హండ్రెడ్ క్రోర్ స్కీమ్ ఫర్ better water security why it is important because if we consider the recent state of climate report asia published by world meteorological organization you can see that asia is vulnerable to extreme weather events such as cold wave heat wave flood and drought therefore it will raise a significant question about the food security and in the scenario this scheme is very crucial for a nation with 100 crore plus population so without much delay let's get into the article first we are going to see what are the different types of modern irrigation first type of irrigation is drip irrigation here the water will be delivered directly to plant roots and what are the advantages of this it will minimize water wastage it is suitable for regions affected due to water scarcity or limited water availability and the, it will also promote plant health that is it will prevent problems such as water logging and salinization second type of modern irrigation is sprinkler irrigation here the water will be sprayed over crops like rainfall that is here the water will be mimicked like rainfall it is suitable for various type of crops and this system will provide uniform water distribution that is the water will be reaching every nook and corner of the field and the third type of irrigation is subsurface irrigation here the water will be applied below the surface through a network of pipe or tube and that will be connected to the roots of the plant therefore the water will reach the roots of the plant and here also the advantages are high water use efficiency it will reduce the problems such as water logging and this system can be automated for precision agriculture next type of irrigation system is solar powered irrigation systems here the irrigation system will use solar energy to power the machines what are the advantages of the solar powered irrigation system it will reduce the dependence on electricity or fossil fuel it is very suitable for remote regions with no access to conventional source of energy it is using the light energy of sun therefore it is environment friendly and reduces pollution due to fossil fuel usage and the next type is smart irrigation systems here the irrigation system will use technologies like soil moisture sensor weather data and automation to optimize irrigation schedule and water usage what are the advantages of this efficient water usage based on real time data reduces water usage up to 50 percentage and it will also help farmers to manage water across multiple crop now we are going to discuss some of the key initiatives taken by the government of india to promote better irrigation the first scheme is pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana it was launched in the year 2015 to achieve arkat ko pani that is water for every farm and improve water usage efficiency and what are the key features of this irrigation scheme first one is development of irrigation sources like canal river pond etc and second one is promoting decentralized water sources like farm pond and check dams and this scheme will also encourage advanced technologies like micro irrigation technologies to achieve better water efficiency and under the scheme the government also launched a campaign called per drop more crop to promote micro irrigation and advanced technology for better under the scheme the government promoted a campaign called per per crop more drop to promote micro irrigation and advanced technologies for better water usage efficiency and the next scheme is national water mission the objective of the scheme is to conserve water minimize wastage and ensure equitable distribution of water across different regions and what are the key features of the scheme it aims to improve water use efficiency by 20 percentage it encourages water saving technologies and uh, rainwater harvesting it also promote efficient water irrigation it also promotes efficient irrigation techniques such as micro irrigation and drip irrigation to reduce the water loss the next government scheme is adal bahujal yojana it was launched in the year 2020 it promotes the management the better management of groundwater resource sustainably especially in the region facing water water stress what are the key features of the scheme it aims to improve groundwater it aims to improve groundwater management practices with the community participation the program will target areas with a critical groundwater level to improve water availability to agriculture and finally the scheme will also encourage water conservation and sustainable use of water and the last scheme is jal shakti abhiyan it was launched in the year 2019 the objective of the scheme is to promote water conservation and efficient water management the scheme is focusing on rainwater harvesting watershed management groundwater recharge and this scheme also encourages decentralized 
water storage facilities like we already discussed farm pond and uh, check dams with this we are coming to the end of this topic so in this topic we discussed the government's plan to introduce a 4500 scheme for better water security for the farmers and then we discussed uh, some of the modern irrigation technologies and their advantages and then we discussed the key initiatives of the government of india to ensure better irrigation and efficient water use management and based on this discussion try to answer this prelims question consider the following reduced weed precision water efficiency prevention of soil erosion how many of the above are the benefits of drip irrigation let's see the answer the answer is option d all of the above yes the drip irrigation will reduce the growth of weed it is suitable for precision agriculture and it ensures better water use efficiency and it will also reduce the problem of soil erosion so with this background now we are moving on to the next article so look at this newspaper article cop29 in azerbaijan focus to be on climate finance agreement so this year cop29 will be held in baku azerbaijan and the major focus will be on climate finance agreement climate financing is a very essential to to build climate resilient infrastructure as well as mitigation projects but this climate finance has several challenges for example structuring the finance is a biggest challenge and ensuring adequate contribution is a biggest challenge so these are the challenges associated with the climate change we are going to discuss the cop but before that we have to discuss certain terms used in this newspaper article the first one is new climate finance fund so we know that it is a fund raised by the azerbaijan to support developing countries in tackling climate change this is a part of paris agreement commitments paris agreement was signed in the year 2015 followed by the cop 21 we know that so it is a part of the paris agreement commitment and the second term is climate finance action fund it is a voluntary contribution from fossil fuel producing nations and company the objective of this fund is to support climate adaptation projects as well as mitigation projects it also aligns with the paris agreements commitment of raising 100 billion dollar annually by the year 2025 as a part of climate finance and the third paris agreement commitments so like i already said the paris agreement was signed in cop21 in the year 2015 so under this paris agreement commitment the developed nations are obligated to raise climate finance every 5 year starting 2025 but it has challenge for example in the beginning itself we discussed the challenge associated with the climate finance that is structuring the climate finance is a biggest problem ensuring adequate contribution from different nations is a biggest problem so these are the problems associated with the climate finance so what is the agenda of azerbaijan cop29 the focus will be on transition transition to green energy without harming the economy that is economic production should not be hampered due to the transition from fossil fuel or conventional source of energy to green energy azerbaijan also advocated for scaling up energy storage promoting green energy and digitization of energy management energy management to reduce data emission so there are and apart from this the azerbaijan also has other proposal that is creation of global green hydrogen market green hydrogen market for hydrogen produced from renewable source of energy such as wind solar and and hydro power now we are going to see an overview about the cop cop means conference of parties it is the highest decision making body of united nations framework convention on climate change this unfcc was established in the year 1994 and it will meet annually to assess the progression in the climate fight and and what is united nations framework convention on climate change it is an international treaty adopted in the year 1992 followed by the rio summit or the earth summit and the cop that is a conference of party is the supreme decision making body within this united nation framework convention on climate change they will assess the progression in the ongoing fight against the climate change that is it will review the UNFCC's implementation and it negotiates new commitments now we are going to see some of the important conference of party summit the first one is cop21 it resulted in the agreement that is paris agreement the objective of the paris agreement is to limit global warming below 2 degree celsius preferably 1.5 degree celsius than the pre industrial level the paris agreement also has many other commitments such as climate finance adaptation and mitigation projects and also global stock take every 5 years global stock take is an assessment of the implementation or the progression of commitments in the paris agreement it will be held in every 5 years and the next summit is cop26 it was held in glasgow in the year 2021 the major focus of the summit were net zero pledges what is net zero net zero means maintaining the balance of production and reduction of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere and each country has their own commitments for example india is committed to net zero 2070 and other developed nations are committed to net zero 2050 
like that. And the next is climate finance that is arranging or organizing fund for building climate resilient infrastructure and supporting nations vulnerable to climate change. And the third objective was facing down coal that is elimination of coal slowly. And the finally and the last focus was on nationally determined contribution that is each nation will make their own commitment or plans to achieve the net zero pledges. For example, India is committed to the year 2070. Other nations are committed to 2050. So, like that, the nationally determined contributions will be there. So, each country will have their own plans and uh, strategies to achieve the net zero in a in a specific time. And the next summit is COP29. It was held in Sharm El Sheikh in the year 2022. The major focus were addressing adaptation, and the summit also established loss and damage fund to support countries vulnerable to climate change. And the next important summit is COP28 that was held in Dubai in the year 2023. This summit emphasized the global stock take to assess the progression or the commitments to the Paris Agreement. Now, we are going to see India's role in COP. First one is national commitment. Yes, India has its own national commitments in the fight against the climate change. For example, reducing emission intensity to 33 to 35 percentage by 2030, achieving 40 percentage of non-fossil fuel installed capacity by the year 2030, and creation of carbon sink. Carbon sink is a part of carbon sequestration. So, that is a uh, carbon sink is a technique of creating areas or space for absorbing carbon. So, India is committed to the creation of carbon sink of 2.5 to 3 billion tons of carbon equivalent by the year 2030. And coming to the leadership, yes, India is one of the strong nations advocating for climate justice, equity in climate fund and uh, it also supports common but differentiated responsibility. What is common but differentiated responsibility? Considering the history, from the 17th century, many nations took the advantage of industrial revolution and achieved economic prosperity. But after the decolonization, many new nations emerged on the world, but they were industrially as well as economically backward. But therefore, under the common but differentiated responsibility, under this principle, both the developed and the developing nations took the responsibility of climate change, but their approach will be different and more responsible. And the third one is International Solar Alliance. It was launched by India at the COP21. It promotes and develops solar energy in the tropical countries. It is a key step against the fight of climate change. So, in this topic, we discussed certain terms mentioned in the newspaper related to the climate change and the upcoming Azerbaijan COP29. And after that, we discussed what is COP. We also had an overview about UNFCC. So, based on this discussion, try to answer this prelims question. The question is, with a reference to the agreement at the UNFCC meeting in Paris in 2015, which of the following statements is or are correct? This question was asked in UPSC in the year 2016. Statement 1. The agreement was signed by all member countries of the UN and it will go effect it will go into effect in the year 2070 second statement the agreement aims to limit greenhouse gas emissions so the rise in the average global temperature by the end of the century does not exceed 2 degrees celsius or even 1.5 degrees celsius above the pre industrial level the third statement developed countries acknowledged their historical responsibility in global warming and committed to donate 100 dollar 1000 billion a year from 2022 help developing countries cope with the climate change Select the correct answer using the code given below. Option A, 1 and 3 only. Option B, 2 only. Option C, 2 and 3 only. Option D, 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer is option B, 2 only. Statement 1 is incorrect. The agreement was signed by all member countries of the UN and it will go into effect in 2017. It is not 2017, it is 2016. The Paris Agreement was signed in the year 2015. So, the it will come into effect. Therefore, it will go into effect in the year 2016. So, the statement is incorrect. Statement 3 is also incorrect. Where this statement goes wrong? Developed countries acknowledged their historical responsibility in global warming and committed to donate dollar dollar thousand billion a year. Here, the statement goes wrong. It is not dollar thousand billion. It is dollar hundred billion. So, the statement 1 and 3 are incorrect. So, let us move to the next article. Look at this newspaper article, Prime Minister to attend Quad Summit address Indian diaspora in USA. This article is talking about the upcoming visit of Prime Minister Narendra Modi to USA from September 21 to 23. In the visit, he will attend the Quad Leaders Summit and he will also address India in the United Nations Summit of the Future. After this, he will meet the Indian diaspora in USA, the second largest diaspora in the United States. So, in this background, let us discuss more about Quad and its significance. Quad, Quadrilateral Security Alliance. It is an informal strategic forum involving India, 
USA, Japan and Australia with an objective to achieve free and open Indo-Pacific regional stability and security and maintaining balance of power in the eastern waters. What are the key focus of Quad? It is focusing on sea route and ensuring liberal trade policies. And next focus is countering China's influence as a part of balance of power in the eastern waters. It also focuses in other key areas such as disaster relief, climate change, infrastructure development and emerging technologies such as semiconductors, and quantum computing. Coming to the background of the formation of the court, it can be traced back to the year 2004 when India suffered with the devastating tsunami. That time, the four nations that is Japan, India, Australia and USA came forward as a part of disaster relief. And after three years, based on the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's idea, the court was established in the year 2007. But it was inactive for the next 10 years and finally became active in the year 2017 followed by the official talk in US followed by the official talk in Philippines. What are the principles of COD? The first principle is free and open Indo-Pacific that is no single nation should dominate the eastern waters and the second principle is establishing rules based order that is that includes promotion of freedom of navigation and liberal trading system. The next principle is alternative financing that is providing financial assistance to the nations who are in need. For example, if you look into Pacific, you can see many small island nations belonging to Melanesia, Polynesia and Micronesia. These nations are very small and tourism is a major source of income for these nations. But due to the pandemic, the tourism was declined and these nations started facing financial problems and making them vulnerable to credit. Therefore, an alliance of four nations will provide essential credit facility as well as other assistance to these nations and this will help them to reduce the dependence on one nation like China. It will eventually helpful in maintaining the balance of power in Indo-Pacific. Now we are going to see the areas of cooperation of COD. The first major area is security and defense that includes regular military training and drills and the best example is Malabar naval exercise it was started in the year 1992 between India and USA after that Japan joined and in the year 2020 Australia also joined the Malabar naval exercise in another sense now it is a quad naval exercise it is held to en enhance the maritime security and the next major area of cooperation is emerging technologies that includes cyber security information sharing and uh, sharing of new technologies and focus on critical technologies like us like semiconductors and quantum computing and the third is infrastructure development that includes financial assistance to the infrastructure development and uh, focus on climate resilient infrastructure and the next area of focus is climate change and health that includes cooperation in addressing global challenges like pandemic and global and calamities now we are going to see how the quad is significant for india the first major significance is countering china we know that China is powerful than India in the terms of military, financially, as well as technological way. And we also have border tension with China. Therefore, an alliance with the superpowers like Japan, USA and Australia will be really helpful for China in countering, will be useful for India in countering China. And the next area is naval cooperation. The naval cooperation with the court members will be very useful for India to protect India's interest in Indo-Pacific. And finally, regional stability. The court plays an important role in enhancing India's role in ensuring regional stability as well as fostering economic ties with the Indo-Pacific. In the topic, court, we discussed what is court, the formation of court, how court is significant to India and what are the principles of court. So based on this discussion, try to answer this prelims question. The question is, with reference to the quadrilateral security dialogue, consider the following statements. First statement, the Quad is an informal strategic dialogue between India, Japan, Australia and United States. Second statement, the primary focus of Quad is to counterbalance China's growing influence in the Indo-Pacific region. Third, third statement, all member countries of the Quad are part of North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Which of the following statements is or are correct? Option A, 1 only. Option B, 1 and 2 only. Option C, 2 and 3 only. And option D, 1, 2 and 3. The correct answer is option B, 1 and 2 only. The statement 3 is incorrect. All member countries of COD are not a part of North Atlantic Treaty Organization. The best example is India. India is not a part of NATO. With this, we are coming to the end of today's newspaper analysis. If you like the video, don't forget to hit the like button. Give your feedbacks as comments and share this content with your friends to make the competition more healthy. And before leaving this channel, don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell icon to receive on-time updates. Thank you. Have a nice day.